In this next session, we're going to once again look at profit calculations under an absorption costing system and a marginal costing system. And once again, we're going to have an additional complication. So in this session, we are going to consider how we deal with opening and closing inventory in our profit calculation. And ultimately, what we are going to discover is that our absorption costing profit and our marginal costing profit may be different depending on any movement in our inventory levels. And it's going to be very, very exciting. Before we get into our exercise, though, we're going to just note down what we need to do with our opening and closing inventory in our profit calculations. So we'll have our absorption costing and our marginal costing profit calculations. What do we do with opening inventory? Well, in an absorption costing system, the value of our opening inventory is added to our production costs. In a marginal costing system, it is added to our variable costs. And that's how we deal with our opening inventory. So what do we do then with our closing inventory? Well, the value of our closing inventory is carried forward to the next period. So in our profit calculation, in the current period, we're going to deduct the value of our closing inventory from our costs. So in an absorption costing system, our closing inventory is deducted from production costs. And in a marginal costing system, the value of our closing inventory is deducted from variable costs. And one final thing before we move into our exercise, a quick reminder of one of the things I told you in the first session on this chapter. How do we value our inventory under each of these two costing systems? Just note down, because this will become important now in this session. So the value of our inventory Per unit in an absorption costing system will be the full production cost per unit. And remember, in a marginal costing system, it's going to be the variable production cost per unit only. And we'll need to bear this in mind when we're valuing our opening and closing inventory under each costing system in the next exercise. So let's have a look at our exercise then. Okay, so once again, our company produces a single product and we have our per unit information our fixed production overheads, and our budgeted production. Now, we need to show the profit calculation for the month when 6,000 units were produced and 4,800 units were sold using our absorption and our marginal costing systems. And we're told, assume that all costs were as budget. Now, the first little thing we're going to think about is our opening and closing inventory levels. We're not told in the question 
about any opening inventory units, so we can assume that this is zero. So we'll just note down then that our opening inventory is equal to zero. And our closing inventory then is how many units? Well, at the start of the period, our opening inventory was zero units. During the period, we have produced 6,000 units, but we've sold 4,800 of those units. So how many units do we have left over at the end of the period? The remaining 1,200. We can calculate our closing inventory as our opening inventory, zero, plus our production units of 6,000, minus our sales units of 4,800. So our closing inventory is 1,200 units. Now the next thing I want us to consider is our inventory valuation under each of our two systems, absorption costing and marginal costing. So if we think about this, under our absorption costing, it's going to be valued at the full production cost. What is the full production cost per unit? Think back to our absorption costing chapter. Our full production cost per unit will be our direct cost per unit plus our indirect or our overhead cost per unit. In that case, be direct cost plus our variable overhead per unit plus our fixed overhead cost per unit. In a marginal costing system, our inventory is going to be valued at the variable production cost. What is the variable production cost? Well, we know our direct costs, our direct materials and our direct labour will be variable costs. And we also know, of course, that our variable production overhead will be included. So, we can bear this in mind then as we go through our profit calculations. So let's start with our absorption costing system. Remember, when we're doing our absorption costing profit calculation, First, we need to consider any under or over absorption. So we need to look at then, at the start of the period, what was the overhead absorption rate that we calculated. Our overhead absorption rate will be our budgeted fixed production overhead costs divided by our budgeted activity. Our budgeted fixed production overheads were £10,000 and our budgeted activity was 5,000 units. So our overhead absorption rate will be £2 per unit. Okay, so let's do a quick check then to see if we've over or under absorbed. By the end of the period, our overhead absorbed will be 
our overhead absorption rate multiplied by our actual activity. So how many units have we actually produced by the end of the period? Let's have a quick look back at the question. We're told that during the period we produced 6,000 units. For each of these units we charged or absorbed two pounds to our production overhead account. So our overhead absorbed then be our 6,000 units, so our actual activity multiplied by our overhead absorption rate, which gives us 12,000 pounds. We need to compare this to our actual fixed production overhead cost. We're told that all costs were as budget, our budgeted fixed costs were £10,000, so our actual fixed costs were £10,000. Finally then, let's look at have we under or over absorbed? Well, we have charged £12,000 in fixed production overheads to our production account. Have we actually incurred £12,000 in fixed production overheads? No, our actual cost was only £10,000, which means we have charged too much to our production account. Remember, if our overhead absorbed is greater than our actual overhead incurred, then we have over-absorbed. So our over-absorption then is the difference of £2,000. Okay, once we've done that step, we can get on with doing our profit calculation in our absorption costing system. So beginning as always with our sales revenue, this will be our units sold multiplied by our selling price. We're told we sold 4,800 units at a selling price per unit of £10. So our sales revenue is 48,000. Next thing we'll look at are the production costs. Now remember we have our additional complication, being our opening and closing inventory. Now I know our opening inventory was zero units, but we're still going to include a line for it in our profit calculation, so we know where it would go. So when we're looking at our production costs, the first thing we would consider is our opening inventory value. In this case, zero units, so our opening inventory value is zero. Once we've done that, we can add in then our production costs for the period. So, our first production cost is our direct materials. Our direct material costs for the period will be the number of units we have produced multiplied by the direct materials cost per unit. So how many units have we produced? Look back at the question. We're told we have produced 6,000 units. So our direct material cost for the period will be 6,000 multiply by 3, giving us a total of 18,000. Moving on to our direct labour. Again, this will be the units we have produced multiplied by the direct labour cost per unit. So 6,000 by 2 gives us 12,000. Next production costs, 
will be our variable production overheads. Again, the units we have produced multiply by our variable production overhead cost per unit. 6,000 by 1 gives us 6,000. Now we need to look at our fixed production overheads and we'll start with our fixed production overhead absorbed. We've already worked this out when we were calculating our under or over absorption and we said that we had absorbed 12,000 pounds in fixed production overheads by the end of the period. Now we just need to adjust this for our over absorption. If we have over absorbed, then it means we have charged too much to our production account. So we need to reduce our total production costs by the value of our over absorption. So we're going to reduce our production costs by £2,000. We're nearly there. The last thing we need to consider now is our closing inventory. Remember, the value of our closing inventory is going to be deducted from our production costs. We haven't sold those units yet, so we are carrying the value of them forward to the next period to charge them against the sales revenue um, in the next period when we actually sell those units. So our closing inventory value, well, we have 1,200 units in our closing inventory. What is the value of each of those units? And we know, absorption costing system, the value of each unit is going to be the full production cost per unit. All we have to do is look back at the information in the question and calculate our production cost per unit. So we've said our production cost per unit will be our direct costs plus our variable production overhead per unit, plus our fixed production overhead per unit. Our direct costs then, our direct materials of three pounds, plus our direct labor of two, plus our variable production overhead cost of one. And what was our fixed production overhead cost per unit? Remember, when we calculated our overhead absorption rate, we said that our fixed production overhead per unit was £2. So our full production cost per unit then is £8. So just putting this back in to our profit calculation to work out the total value then of our closing inventory. 1,200 multiplied by £8 gives us a total closing inventory value of 9,600. And we've added everything we need to to calculate our total production costs. So, when we sum our total production costs, you should get 36,400. And we know we subtract this from our sales revenue to get our gross profit. Our sales revenue was 48,000 minus our production costs of 36,500 gives us a gross profit figure of 11,600. And we're done with our absorption costing profit calculation.
Now we just need to do our marginal costing profit calculation. And we know that this is going to be more straightforward because we don't need to consider any under or over absorption. So let's have a look then. start with our sales revenue. We already calculated this. We've sold 4,800 units at £10 each. So our total sales revenue is 48,000. It's a marginal costing system, so the next thing we're going to do is look at our variable costs. We would begin here by adding the value of our opening inventory to our variable costs. We know we have zero units in our opening inventory, so this is just zero. Add on our variable costs for the period. We don't need to do these calculations again. We did them in our absorption costing exercise. So we'll just add on the totals. We've got our direct materials, 18,000. Our direct labor of 12,000. And our variable overhead cost of 6,000. Last little step then, remember we need to deduct the value of our closing inventory from our variable costs. Again, we know that our closing inventory was 1,200 units. And what is the value of each of those units? Let's have a look back to what we said at the start of the question. We said in a marginal costing system, our inventory will be valued at the variable production cost per unit. So that will be our direct costs plus our variable production overhead only. Our direct costs are the same. We've got materials of three and labor of two pounds. Then we just add on our variable production overhead, giving us a per unit value of six pounds. Okay, so we'll use that then to value our inventory in our marginal costing profit calculation. So the total value of our closing inventory, 1,200 multiplied by 6, gives us 7,200. So our total variable costs then, when we just work that through, you should get 28,800. We'll subtract that from our sales revenue to give us our total contribution. And we work out then that our total contribution is 19,200. So our sales revenue of 48,000 minus our total variable costs. Last little step then is to work out our profit by subtracting our fixed costs. So our profit is 9,200 under our marginal costing system. But how is this possible? A few mo moments ago we calculated our profits under an absorption costing system and we said that our profit figure would be 11,600. 
So, if we're looking at the same company in the same results, how are these two figures different? Well, the reason why our marginal and our absorption costing profits are different is because of our inventory valuation. Let's have a look again at our closing inventory under each profit calculation. In our marginal costing profit calculation, we said the total value of our closing inventory was £7,200. This was based on a per unit value of £6. So we reduced our costs for the period by £7,200 in total. Quick reminder, what did we do in our absorption costing profit calculation? If we go back and have a look. In our absorption costing profit calculation, we said something different. When we were valuing our closing inventory, we said the value of each unit was £8. So we got a total closing inventory value of £9,600. And we reduced our costs by the full value of £9,600. So in our absorption costing system, because we have put a higher per unit value on our closing inventory, it means that we have carried a higher amount of our costs forward to the next period. What we're going to look at now is a number of key rules. If you learn these rules, then you will be able to approach any question on this section. So, what are our key rules? The first one is if closing inventory is greater than opening inventory, So if our inventory holdings have increased across the period, then our absorption costing profit will always be greater than our marginal costing profit. That's rule number one. Rule number two is the reverse. So if closing inventory is less than opening inventory. Or in other words, if our inventory holdings have decreased across the period, then our absorption costing profit will always be less than our marginal costing profit. Finally, how do we calculate the difference? Well, there's a formula when calculating the difference between our marginal and absorption costing profits. The difference in profits will always be equal to the movement in inventory multiplied by the fixed production overhead cost per unit. Remember, it is the fixed production overhead cost per unit that creates the difference in our inventory valuations. In an absorption costing system, we include the fixed production cost per unit as part of our inventory valuation. In a marginal costing system, we only look at the variable costs. Now we're just going to have a look at the information in the exercise we've just worked through to illustrate how these rules are always true.
So, in the previous exercise, we calculated an absorption costing profit of £11,600 and a marginal costing profit of 9,200. So the difference then in the profits was 2,400. Okay. So let's have a look at our inventory movements to see do our key ro rules hold true? Our opening inventory was zero. Our closing inventory was 1,200. Alright, so our closing inventory was greater than our opening inventory. According to rule number one, this must mean that our absorption costing profit was greater than our marginal costing profit. Is that true? Clearly, we can see that is the case. 11,600 is greater than 9,200. So our first rule applies. We said, according to rule number three, that we can always calculate the difference in profits as the movement in inventory multiplied by the fixed production overhead cost per unit. Let's see, is that true? So if our opening inventory was zero and our closing inventory was 1,200, then our movement in inventory is just the difference between our opening and closing inventory, which in this case is 1,200. What was our fixed production overhead cost per unit? Well, if you recall, when we were doing our absorption costing profit calculation, we calculated an overhead absorption rate for our fixed production overheads of two pounds. Our difference in profits should be equal to the movement in inventory multiplied by the fixed production overhead cost per unit. So the difference in profits should be 1,200 multiplied by two pounds, or 2,400 in total, which is exactly what the difference between our absorption costing and marginal costing profits was. Okay, to finish up this session and this section, we're going to look at an example of an exam standard question on this area. If you know the key rules, you will be able to approach any of these exam questions. So let's have a look to see how we can apply them. Okay, so we're told in this question a company has a profit of £75,000 using a marginal costing system. Budgeted fixed costs were £30,000 and budgeted activity was 10,000 units. And we have information about opening inventory and production and sales. So, we're asked then, what would the profit be using absorption costing? This is a very typical question for this area. You'll be given the profits using one of our two systems and you are expected to apply our key rules in order to reconcile the two different profit figures. In a question like this, the first thing you need to consider are the inventory movements. 
so that you can understand whether the absorption costing profit will be greater than or less than the marginal costing profit. So we have our opening inventory and our production and sales. What was our closing inventory? We can calculate this as our opening inventory of 500 plus our production 10,500 minus our sales of 10,750 giving us a closing inventory then of 250 units. So the first thing we know then is that our closing inventory is less than our opening inventory. According to rule number two, this means that absorption costing profit will be less than marginal costing profit. So we have our first piece of information. The second thing we need to calculate is what the difference in these two profit figures will be. Remember the difference will be the movement in inventory multiplied by the fixed production overhead cost per unit. If we have a look back at the question, our fixed production overhead cost per unit will be our budgeted fixed costs of 30,000 divided by our budgeted activity of 10,000. So our fixed production cost per unit is three pounds. Our opening inventory was 500, our closing inventory was 250, so our movement in inventory is just the difference between the two. So our movement in inventory is 250 units. If we multiply that by our fixed production overhead cost per unit of three pounds, then our difference in profits must be 750 pounds. So now we know that the absorption costing profit is going to be less than marginal costing profit. And we know that the difference between the two will be 750 pounds. So our final step then is to calculate our absorption costing profit. We're told that our marginal costing profit was £75,000. We know absorption costing will be less than this and we know that the difference will be 750 which means our absorption costing profit must have been £750 less than our marginal costing profit. So our absorption costing profit then is 74,250. If we check back we can see in our multiple choice that the correct answer then is B.